Like hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here to my channel, my name is Cor and I'm your Bistop Nurse from Southeast England. So you are here watching the part 2 of my Heiko Nose Thread Lift journey. So if you have seen the part 1, I, I have shared to you my detailed experience of the procedure and the complications that I have experienced and what are the things that I did to resolve the problem. And now you are here on my part 2 of my journey. And in this vlog, I'll be sharing to you what are the pros and cons of having the Heiko Nose Thread Lift and what are the aftercare procedures that you should observe when you do this Heiko Nose Thread Lift. And lastly, I'll be sharing to you my opinion and my advice before you decide to have this procedure. So let's discuss first what are the cons or what are the disadvantages of having the Heiko Nose Thread Lift. So Heiko Nose Thread Lift is not permanent. So as what they have said, as what I've read as well, that the maximum that the Heiko Nose Threads will last is for two years, but the minimum is only for six to eight months. So it depends on your body, on how you would react to the threads and how long it will stay in your nose. So the maximum is two years, so it's not a guarantee that it will really stay for two years there. It's better to stick on the minimum time that it will stay in your system that is six to eight months. So the second disadvantage of having the Heiko Nose Thread Lift is that it is irreversible. So once you don't like the effect, unlike the nose filler, if you don't like the effect of the fillers, um, you can have it dissolve. But with the Heiko Nose Threads, you have to wait until the threads are absorbed by your skin and converted into collagen so that would be six to eight months not unless if you experience what i have experienced which is the thread extrusion then it will be easy to remove the threads so once you get the bumps so they can just open your skin and remove the threads but you know um, it will be a complicated um, scenario if um, there's no um, complications like bump or extrusion the third one is the possible complications of the procedure. So in my part one, I've shared to you that I have experienced several times of thread extrusions and bumps and infection. The possible complications of the procedure are infection, hematoma, inflammation, allergic reactions, thread protrusion. For rare instances, you might experience necrosis. So that's the negative side of having the Heiko Nose Thread Lift. So let's talk about the good side. So let's talk about the pros of Heiko Nose Thread Lift. Why it's so trending? Why it's so popular now? Number one is it's a cheaper alternative to plastic surgery, of course. So as I have shared in my part one, I only spent 14,000 pesos for the Heiko Nose Thread Lift. Well, that time it was a promo deal. I have been seeing a lot of videos on TikTok that they only paid like 7,000, 9,000 or 10,000 pesos for the procedure. The cost of the procedure also depends on how many threads they would put in your nose. So that's one of the reasons that, that this procedure is very hype. The second one is that they call this procedure as a lunchtime nose job because it takes less than an hour to complete the procedure and you can eventually go back to what is your regular task of the day ex except for strenuous activities. Um, the procedure is less invasive and less painful. So initially, they will numb your skin with a cream and then um, before the procedure, they will inject um, local anesthesia in your nose. The fourth advantage of having this procedure is that it is safer than fillers. So the only thing is that the filler, if you don't like the effect, you can reverse it. You can have it dissolve. But the thing is, according to research, the Heiko Nose Thread Lift is safer than the fillers because there is no risk of vessel occlusion. So there is less chance of hitting the nerves and causing necrosis to your nose. Number five, there is quick recovery. The fifth one is really tricky because I cannot guarantee you that it will be a quick recovery for you because it depends on your body. As what I have shared in the part one of my vlog, that I have been struggling with the complications from January 2023 until this time, April 2023. So it is a long recovery period for me. So it depends really on your body, on how well you would react 
um, with the treads if your body won't reject it, okay? Another good reason why people choose to do Heiko Nose Tread Lift is that there is an instant result. And I totally agree that I had an instant result when I had my Heiko Nose Tread Lift, as you can see from this photo. That is just a few hours after I had my Heiko Nose Tread Lift. And last one is very natural looking. Yes, I would agree the Heiko Nose Tread Lift is really natural looking. People would really think twice if you had a nose job or not. Generally, if someone sees you and they're not really close to you, they would never know that you had the procedure. So that's one of the best things about the Heiko Nose Tread Lift. You have to weigh the pros and the cons before you really decide to have this Heiko Nose Tread Lift. Now let's proceed with the aftercare. What are the things that you should do after you went through this procedure? So listen closely because not everyone is fully aware what are the things that you should and you shouldn't do. The aftercare is really vital for you to achieve the desired effect of your high nose tread lift. And that is where I failed. I'll just go through the list that I made based on the advice that I was given and based on the research that I did through the articles that I have read online and through watching a lot of YouTube videos. Number one, avoid makeup and skincare products for at least 48 hours. But if you must, you must avoid the entry point of the tread. Ideally, you shouldn't wet the entry point because it's still considered an open wound. The second one after care is you can do an ice compress to relieve the bruising and the swelling. I didn't do that. <laughs> Third one is take your prescribed medication. So if you were prescribed with antibiotics, it will help with your recovery. And if you have um, low pain tolerance, you can also take your analgesics like paracetamol. When is the best time to um, touch or massage your nose? Um, you can massage your nose gently when the swelling subsides, okay? So don't get too excited to massage your nose when it's, there's still swelling and bruising there and there's still pain. Fourth one, you have to sleep on your back for at least a week, okay? Because it will create pressure on your nose if you will um, sleep against the pillow, which I did. Number five is try to keep your head elevated for a week. Try not to do activities that will put pressure on your nose, especially like for me, I did high intensity workouts. Most of the routine is like going down on the floor that might have aggravated the thread extrusion. Next one is no facials or facial massage for at least two weeks. You should also try to avoid wearing eyewears if possible. So no eyeglasses, no strenuous activities like weightlifting for at least three weeks or longer. And this is where I failed as well because I've been doing strenuous activities like intense exercise and weightlifting. So it really depends on your body and your recovery towards the procedure. Next one is no swimming, especially if the entry point of the tread is not yet healed. To be safe, no swimming for two weeks or more because there is a heat exposure if you do swimming and there is a potential exertion. That's why when I arranged my um, procedure, the high nose tread lift, I really inquired if I'm allowed to go to the beach immediately after the procedure and I was advised, no, you can't um, go to the beach for at least two weeks or go for a swimming in the pool. It makes you prone to infection as well because um, if the entry point is still open, of course, you're exposing it to maybe contaminated water. Um, the tent is avoid excessive heat exposure. So that's including going to the beach. No use of steam rooms and sauna. I would add that one because it will also encourage for the threads to come out. If you had watched my part one, the hot shower I did helped for the threads to come out from my nose since it's already inevitable for me because I already have a, a big opening on my nose that actually helped for my um, threads to come out because it's been bothering me. The next aftercare is for you to have soft diet and to avoid chewing gums for at least two weeks. It sounds silly but it makes sense because when you chew especially with hard meat you will 
put a lot of effort and exertion on your mouth like that and it might create um, pressure on your nose okay so you understand now no dental treatment for at least two weeks no alcohol or smoking for a week after the procedure or maybe more because they believe that it delays the healing of your wound the procedure shouldn't be done for people who are taking blood thinning medications because if you take blood thinning medications of course you are prone to bleeding and bruising and your recovery time will be longer okay i'm adding this one personally because i haven't read this from any articles or from any i haven't seen this from any other videos i don't think this high nose thread lift is ideal for people who are suffering from allergic rhinitis you heard me right because if you have that procedure and every morning you're struggling with your nose and you keep blowing your nose because you have a runny nose it will encourage the threads to come out from the entry point and it made sense because when i had the procedure when i had a procedure last year i was having colds and cough and i keep blowing my nose because i have runny nose that's one of the factors that um, actually caused the threads to come out from my nose if you have this problem with runny nose every single day of your life, don't attempt to have the high nose thread lift at all. I hope anyone who is doing the procedure would take this into consideration because I have experienced it myself and it really did contribute to the extrusion of my threads. And now for my advice. So what will be my advice before you decide on jumping to this bandwagon um, high nose thread lift is keep um, instant result instant beauty before you do that research more about the procedure read more articles watch more videos like this and be aware and be ready for the risks another one is check if you are really ready to adjust your lifestyle or activities after having the high nose thread lift especially for those who have active lifestyle who loves to move a lot, do exercise, intense exercise, do weightlifting, yoga, whatsoever. If you're not ready to give up those activities time, maybe for one or three months. If you're not ready to do that, I don't think Haiku no Tread Lift is for you. Because you're only allowed to do light exercises like walking, like that. So treadmill, treadmill, yes, maybe not the um, intense type of treadmill that you have to do the incline or whatsoever. I think very light exercises are allowed if you have the high nose thread lift. So you have to consider that one. And last one is choose a reliable clinic and ideally it should be within your locality so that you can easily contact them if you um, experience any problems after the procedure and easy also for the consultation. So in my case, I have done my procedure in the Philippines and then I flew back to the UK a week after the procedure without even realizing that i might experience complications if you have a longer holiday well and good if you have like two months holiday in the philippines that's fine at least um at least you can easily go to the clinic if you experience any untoward effects or um, complications from the procedure you can easily go back to the clinic and have it sorted right away but if you are abroad you have to think twice lastly will i do it again will i have a high nose thread lift again will i advise this to my friends um it's a yes and a no for my friends it depends because the complications i've experienced might not happen to you the rejection of threads depends solely on your body and as for the question if i have if i will do it again for myself no i will not do it again because if you only knew what i've been through since january up to this month just to recover from the ups and downs of the complications of my high nose thread lift my paranoia of what would happen um, with my nose and the struggles that i have to battle myself because i did the management diy like do it yourself so that's it um, you have heard from me what are the pros and cons of this procedure 
um, have a think about it um, if you're ready for the complications. I am not saying that I'm against it. I'm just saying that it's not for everyone, okay? And take my advice, um, go through the pros and the cons, and then if you are ready for the aftercare um, for this procedure, then go for it. I, I, won't, I won't discourage you because it's your choice, it's your body. If, you're, if you feel like this procedure will boost your confidence, well, do it. If you have enough money or extra money, um, I think go for the plastic surgery. So hopefully you have learned something from this vlog of the day. Um, if you haven't watched my part one of this Heiko No Shred Lift, I encourage you to watch that um, video. And if you have friends who are thinking to have this procedure, please share the video, the part one and this part two of the Heiko No Shred Lift journey. And also, if you have questions, you can just uh, put it in the comment section and I'll find time to reply. If you're quite embarrassed to put in your questions in the comment section, you can message me personally on my Facebook page for Dapit TV. Thank you again for watching this vlog. If you want to see more of informative videos like this, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye!